95. Adelaide's 5AA. This is Richard Pascoe. At 18 minutes past two, thank you for joining me here on 5AA. Another regular to my Saturday afternoon show is Steve Davis. Good afternoon, Steve. Hello, Richard. I've got another story for you today for about another uh, small business person here in SA who's got a quite an interesting background. Um, and his name is Don Violi uh, from right. Chrome, Chrome Hair Studio in Prospect. Uh, in fact, they're in the, the Coles supermarket building. You just had the Coles add-on before. Yeah. Um, it starts, this story, I met him during mentoring, but we get into people's background. Um, but funny. I want to go back. Yes. Before he was selling or doing hair, he was a newspaper boy, a newsboy, back in 1971, 72, uh, selling the news. Remember the news? I do. I actually, yeah. I did it on a railway platform for um, a few weeks as well. Did you really? Yeah, I did. A few Some weeks? The, yeah. Well, that didn't take off very well then, that career. No, I was crap at doing that. You know, okay, you well, only so many people can stand there and go, newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he was once Newsboy of the Month, by the way. Thank right. you very much. Very uh, good. But he remembers this. Now, I don't remember this. He would do it sometimes after school, but he did Saturday shifts, and they did two shifts, the Saturday morning and the Saturday afternoon. I did don't the remember news, that. I don't remember the news doing a, a Saturday afternoon edition, unless it was still the same paper, just sold in two different <laughs> shifts. Maybe someone listening might remember that. I was but, just going to um, say, if you remember that, give us a call. All right. right. Would like, would like to, yeah, just like to, yeah, that, I mean, that's, I can't remember, two two editions of the um, paper. Well, at least he did two shifts, and I'm assuming that means there is editions um, that match, but, uh, you know, these are the bits of history that he uncovers. Uh, in fact, you know what, he knows so much about Adelaide's history, he's like an Italian version of Keith Conlon. <laughs> he, he he knows lots of trivia. And he's probably listening while he's cutting someone's hair at the moment going, ah, Steve. <laughs> anyway, um, here's the thing. He was starting to think about what trade he wanted to get into. And one of his mates who was a fellow paper boy had a sister who was getting into hairdressing. And that piqued Don's interest. I mean, the hairdressing, I think, more so than the sister. There we go. And it, he, he applied... And he got in and did his study. And then in 1973, the fateful step started. He went to a, a salon called Unisex, which was upstairs in James Place. And he tells me it was the first truly unisex salon in Adelaide, where you had men and women both having their hair cut in the same space at the same time. Because it doesn't happen any, doesn't happen, or it didn't happen back then, did it? No, no, they were never the two shall meet. Um, and it was run by Dominic Marafiotti and, how's this for a name, Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> wonder, they the I partners. wonder where they got that name from, so yes. Yes, exactly. Anyway, uh, long story short, he started there, and after a while he was brought on, and then about six months afterwards, um, Dominic and Woodrow parted companies, Don bought in, and the salon was renamed to Hair International, which also might be known by some people listening in today. And guess who one of his regular customers was? This is the early 70s. Uh, Don Dunstan. Correct, Damondo. Don Dunstan. And I asked him what it was like cutting Don's hair, and he said, well, he was actually very quiet. He hardly spoke while he was having his hair cut. And Don's theory is that the other Don used his hair cut as a time just to recover because you're in the limelight the whole time yeah which makes me think who's cutting stephen marshall's hair at the moment and is that a <laughs> cone of silence uh, or who'd like to uh, anyway you, so hold on steve the only big thing there would only be one thing worse if scott morrison washed your hair before somebody else cut it <laughs> well okay yeah you, you won okay. uh, <laughs> now hair international was different and this will also pique some interest of some listeners uh, because Dominic went to Melbourne, did some study, and they got the ideas from the Vidal Sassoon Hair School. And this was revolutionary. Back around that time, ladies would go and get their hair set once a week and just nurse that hairdo as best they can till next week. And by about two or three days, it was pretty 
ordinary. The Dao Sassoon came to the table and said, no, no, let's make hairstyles that the ladies can manage themselves, obviously then buy product to look after them. But that was what they adopted. So Hair International was one of the first leaders in bringing that into Adelaide, which was interesting. And then uh, things go international here. Are you ready? 1984, something happened that put them all on the map. They moved out of the city. They went to Prospect. And Prospect Council was doing a program of decorating stoby poles at that time and the artist who decorate who they arranged to decorate the stoby pole out the front of their uh, new salon to be was clifton pew no oh. and guess what he painted on that stoby pole uh barbershop nope adam and eve okay. and let me tell you all hell broke loose well back then it would Ad- too wouldn't it good heavens Oh, my goodness. Um, Art people loved it. Church groups were seething. There were protests. One Christian group vandalised it the night before the salon opening. But here's a little salon in Prospect, on Prospect Road. Four Corners did a story. Uh, Today, Tonight did a story. Talkback Radio was full of it. US news programs were covering this, for crying out loud. It was talked about all around the world. And if you really are a history buff, on their Facebook page, uh, the Chrome Hair Studio Facebook page, uh, January 2019, they put up a video, all this archive footage of the big unveiling in 1984. Don Dunstan was there. Arturo Taverno was there. There's well, there's a name, a name from the past. <laughs> yes. Uh, John Bannon's dad, Charles Bannon, was there. Uh, the Barbaro brothers. The late Russell Starkey was there. Um, and if you want to see Russell in full stride, my goodness, he is owning that place, swanning around. Uh, they had a little robot serving drinks. There was a swimming pool out the front of the head. <laughs> it's amazing what happened on Prospect Road in 1984. I mean, that's a, <laughs> so, I mean, it's a great... I mean, it is a one... Prospect Road, I love Prospect Road. Uh, really, some wonderful, wonderful businesses down there. It's a, it is a great shopping strip. Well, it is, and uh, it's a night. Nice, even though I've sort of moved away, I used to live around the corner from there, which is how when I first met Don. Mm. Um, I still go back every three weeks for my hair to be snipped. Yep. Um, because it is, it's great. Have a bit of breakfast there. Uh, afterwards, it's a good part of town. But there you go. There's just this little bit of history behind this unassuming bloke. You walk past, you see him there in his salon cutting hair, and I tell you, if you want a haircut and you want to have lots of stories of time. You just pick his brain. He is seriously a walking historian of Adelaide. He knows and remembers the details about everything. I mean, that's just, yeah, which is great. I'm going to have to go and see him. Are you a three-week get-your-hair-cut bloke, are you? I am. Do you reckon that's over the top? No, well, I'm a six-week get-your-hair-cut. Oh, six. Okay. Six. six. Yeah. Starts yeah. a little bit shaggy, well, you know. Starts to get a bit tight, unti- slightly untidy after six. Yeah. Well, I like the fact that Every three, it's nice and trimmed, in and out, in the morning, have my shower, it's dried, it's ready in like two seconds flat. It's, it sounds uh, like uh, you're uh, taking it off your head to just drop it off to him then like the dry cleaners then, Steve. No, that's, hey, my... that's a good idea. Oh, by the way, Jordan Goodrum was there last year in the in the cell. Oh. Well. Her mum gets her hair cut there. I hope I'm not telling tales out of school, but uh, there you go. It's um, very good. You never know who you'll bump into. It may be even Richard Pascoe. Uh, Yes. No, no I'm, I'm at Glam Rock here on uh, McGill Road, which have cash register sounds going everywhere here at the moment. Yeah, g- <laughs> g'day, Heidi, from that year as well. Um, Steve, give a, give a plug for yourself, because we don't do this enough. You're, you're very unassuming. Oh, well, look, I met Don and all the people I've been talking about, because I've got a little marketing consultancy called Talked About Marketing, and they can do this little mentoring program with us. We get three hours of our time for 44 bucks at the moment. Thank you, federal government. And uh, it's great. We, we get to help people, but then you just pick up the stories. And there are so many out there. There are, I could fill your program for the rest of days. There are so many interesting stuff, Aussie. So I appreciate that. Appreciate you. No, and, Steve. Uh, and we'll have I, another I, story next week, won't we? Oh, look, I think so. And if, it, me, if anyone does remember that change in hairstyles or the news publication, I, I would, I'm seriously interested yes. yeah. in getting to the bottom of that. Yeah.
No, all, all good. Very good. Steve, we will talk to you next week. Have a good, good rest of the weekend. You too. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Steve. Ciao. Bye. We're going to be back after this short break. Hi.